I definitely don't need it. Who lives in a tree dome under the sea? Sandy Cheeks does, but remember that the sea is very heavy. So if a dome was under that kind of load, would Sandy's tree dome quickly implode? Are you ready? <laughs> Yar. In SpongeBob SquarePants, the character Sandy Cheeks is a squirrel from Texas that lives under the sea with the assistance of a giant transparent dome, complete with oak tree, picnic table, and running wheel. It looks like a decent reverse aquarium, but could it really stand up to the crushing ocean pressures? That depends first and foremost on the weight of water directly above Sandy's dome. If you divide that by the area we're concerned with, you get a pressure. And you can calculate this hydrostatic pressure by taking the density of the water above the dome, multiplying that by gravity, G, and multiplying that by H, or the height of water above the surface that we are concerned with. Now, if that gives us a pressure that is too much, Sandy's gonna have a bad time. So what would that H be? The popular theory is that Bikini Bottom is actually at the sea floor of Bikini Atoll, an atoll in the Marshall Islands that was famously home to 23 different nuclear tests in the 1940s and the 1950s. The sea floor of Bikini Atoll doesn't get much deeper than 53 meters or around 175 feet. So that's gonna be the height of our water column nuclear test. Does that mean does that mean they're all mutants? And to find the force of this water, we need the weight of all of this water, which means we need first the volume of all of this water. According to Spongepedia or whatever you want to call it, Sandy's tree dome is about 10 meters tall, so that's going to be the radius of our hemisphere. If we use that and a little bit of math, we can get the volume of this water column and multiply it by the density of water times the surface gravity on Earth and get the weight or the force. If we do all that, we can get the volume that we want and therefore the weight that we want. And when you do, you get 1.62 times 10 to the eighth Newtons. 162 million Newtons or 36 million pounds of force in seawater. That does sound like a lot of force for a dome to withstand, but what we still need to find is pressure. Pressure. Pressure is force divided by area. We just found the force, so now we need to find the area, which is the surface of Sandy's tree dome, which is a hemisphere. We already know it has a radius of 10 meters, and from geometry, we know that the outside surface area of a hemisphere is equal to two pi r squared. Doing a bit more math, the pressure comes out to 33 pounds per square inch, or just over two atmospheres worth of pressure. But that number doesn't really mean anything if we don't know how much pressure the dome can withstand, which is dependent on the material, which Sandy says isn't glass, but polyurethane. And polyurethane has a compressive strength of 20,000 pounds per square inch. This stuff can certainly make a very strong dome depending on the thickness. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be strong. Oh, oh, my leg! The internal stress in a thin-walled, spherical object like Sandy's tree dome is equal to the pressure pushing down outside times the radius of the tree dome divided by two times the thickness. So if we assume a decent thickness for Sandy's tree dome, maybe like a meter, and then plug in our values that we've already found, we get a total internal stress of 176 PSI, far below our limit. So that means if you threw all of Bikini Bottom's water down on top of the tree dome, three days later, it would continue to be fine. In fact, given these decent estimations, Sandy's tree dome could exist at much deeper depths before experiencing any kind of failure. 10 meters of water pushes down on a surface with about one atmosphere of pressure, or 14 pounds per square inch. So if Sandy had a 10 meter tall, one meter thick polyurethane tree dome, it could survive many tens of meters below the surface. You're good, you're, you're good. Keep going, you're good, you're good, you're, you're good, stop. 
With the dimensions we assumed, Sandy's tree dome could withstand the kinds of pressures found at over two and a half kilometers underneath the sea. This is deeper than where giant squid prowl. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than messing with dome depth, we could also mess with dome thickness, since that isn't established. At the bottom of Bikini Bottom, using our internal stress equation, Sandy's tree dome could have walls that are just one centimeter thick. That thick, and it would be fine. Right? Still pretty impressive. Next try, Sunday. Of course, none of this matters if Sandy can't actually live in a tree dome under the sea, so let's do a quick check. Being about 50 meters under the surface of the sea, Sandy's tree dome is firmly in the euphotic zone, meaning that light from the sun can still penetrate, meaning that photosynthesis may in fact still be possible within the dome itself, and a giant oak tree 10 meters tall definitely puts out enough oxygen for one little squirrel. So all Sandy would have to do is provide it with enough carbon dioxide and nutrients to sustain itself. It all kind of checks out. We know that because we've kind of done this. That's an underwater garden. So would Sandy's tree dome implode at the depth it's at at the bottom of Bikini Bottom? No, according to our math, it could go kilometers deeper before it experienced any kind of structural failure. Though Sandy wouldn't want to test that limit or else it should be so deep that no light would penetrate and then there'd be no oxygen and then no Sandy. But who could? live in a tree dome under the sea? Sandy, maybe, because science. Wait, if we're underwater, how could there be, oh. Well, I guess it could be like a chemical fire, like magnesium! Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! It's science! Yes! Thank you so much for watching, Martin. No, not you, your friend Martin. If you want even more silliness, check out my show with my colleague Dan Casey, Musquatch, where we get very silly about a very serious man. And if you want something a bit more premium, check out my show, The Space Program, by subscribing to Alpha at projectalpha.com. And if you do that, you can also get this show two days earlier than anyone else. Like dumb normies do. Thanks, bye. <laughs>